Hey Aries, it's Empress Rose here. Welcome to your reading. General readings, of course, as I'm sure you are aware. Um, take what works, leave what doesn't. Um, check your other major placements if I don't find your wavelength or storyline on this reading. We're starting with the Oracle of Mystical Moments. Ooh, we have sitting in place uh, here, going through some sort of grief process, some sort of difficult grieving process. We have home in the sky. This is some stagnant energy. Uh, we may have gotten a little overly comfortable here, right where we're at. Uh, it's comfortable. It's cozy. We feel at home right where we're at. Um, things will be changing, um, but you're not doing it. You're just sitting here. You're, you're here being comfortable. You could go somewhere. You could make some things happen. Are you a little too comfortable? There is a little sense of a little bit of toxicity here in this picture, a little bit of a smog here, not very healthy for us. We're not really, it's not really our nature to be homebodies like this here, like I see, and you could do something about it. You could just move on, but, but you're, you're comfy right where you're at. Uh, your intuition is a little faint here. Um, you you don't have a strong will to move forward on something to keep going on something it's not it's not really calling to you and that maybe because you're not really seeing very clearly how you need to go or what needs to be done nothing almost needs to be done because we're so comfortable right where we are uh, and then we have the observer you are watching something very closely you're trying to figure out something else uh, look, we have again this faint this intuition this faint moon here is growing a little bit stronger in this one. Uh, there's something that you've got your eye on, something you're watching either through social media or through um, something else, just a focused effort. Of course, I always see that she's a slightly unfocused as well. She's, she's a little distracted. There's something she's meaning to focus on. She's committed to it and she means to focus on it a little more than she is. But there is a little bit of magic that happens as we toggle our focus sometimes between one thing and another thing, between what we're supposed to be doing, what we mean to do, what we're here to do. And, um, and, and some, some ideas may be sprouting as you watch this thing and as you focus on the, on the thing and also get a little distracted. Sometimes those, those cool little combinations can create some, some new ideas, ideas that can really take root and can really grow. So we have, um, you might be listening for something. You're definitely, you're very clearly watching for something, but I also think that you're listening. Um, <laughs> I hear crickets though, so that's you know, more listening to the silence. Um, it's always a symbol of listening to silence, hearing those crickets, right? It's ironic. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of, between home in the sky and the observer, you're watching and waiting. You might be watching and waiting for an opportunity. It's not like you're completely closed off or you've completely closed your eyes. You're just not moving right now. There's just not a lot of movement, a lot of thinking though, a lot of watching, learning, listening, thinking. And as you do that, your intuition about the direction you want to go is growing stronger. It reminds me of the Tao Te Ching, um, my favorite verse in it has a line interpreted by Stephen, I cannot remember. Anyway, um, it's um, just, you know, do you have the ability to sit still until the right action arises all by itself? So something will come to you and you'll see what you need to do. Uh, but for now, there's uh, some sitting, watching, waiting. Not really in your nature, but that's what you're doing. Um, and then we have morning dew girl. This is a difficult process. Uh, there's grief here. There's sadness here. Um, we're not sure, maybe in, in somewhere in this stagnant area or part of it is, is a sadness. This morning dew girl is about the alchemy of turning our pain into power. The things that have wounded us. So the alchemy of turning the lead, the things that would weigh us down, the things that would hold us down, um, and, and lower us and keep us, keep us suppressed and low. Alchemy is sort of that emotional, uh, psychological process of turning those very things into gold, right? Turning lead into gold, turning, turning these things that are meant to weigh us down into these, these precious, 
um, this precious metal into a crown, into a glory, into something that can never rust and can never be um, tarnished. Uh, so turning, turning what has held you down or what has been an oppressive thing for you, turning it into a benefit, into a crown. I mean, there is something from your past. There's something you've had to say goodbye to. There's some sort of, might be a separation here, might be something you've had to say goodbye to, but this is, this is here to enrich you. It, you are in that process. It's not done. It's not completed. We're not sitting here on our throne uh, with a gold you know, surrounded by gold saying, you know, look, we have accomplished. It's a process that you're in. So there's these tears are here to, um, to transform you and to, um, and this grief is here. You're in the process of transforming it from something that could weight you down, could hold you down into something that's actually going to be your crowning glory in a way. Right. So, um, very beautiful, beautiful process uh but hard and painful and yeah so there's some grief here for sure it's almost like you're sitting in your grief right now watching maybe even watching yourself change and grow or watching yourself grieve becoming the observer is a is a really good way um to you know uh watch ourselves uh deal with some of the harder more difficult aspects of life is to observe. Okay, we got something for our overall reading. Ace of Materials. Hmm. Interesting, coming in uh, after this um, home in the sky in the observer, we do start something real here. We do start something in the real world in a material way, in a way that we can um, see. It begins it's been a long time coming, a long time sitting, a long time watching, waiting for the opportunity, a long time of learning and trying to understand something. And then here it begins to emerge into our actual life. Something, something new starts, could be a new job, could be even just a new plan or a new direction that we want, we're ready to go in after all of this time of observing. Aries, this is your past, your present, your inner landscape, what's at issue, your environment, to-do list, possible outcome. Fascinating. Um, some of these are reversed. Uh, this deck is hard for me to keep uh, upright and reversed because I don't know why. Anyway, in your recent past, though, we have this muse of emotions. This emotional maturity has been employed. This would be the king of cups here. This emotional maturity, this ability to handle the tumults of life, the ability to handle our feelings, our emotions. This could have been an actual person you were dealing with who's been very mature. You have dealt with them in the past. They've been able to handle whatever you've told them, whatever you've experienced together. They can handle it. They've got the ability to to really, you know, handle their emotional liquor, to, to, to be able to absorb and listen to those emotions with a lot of emotional maturity. So this is either, either, you know, and sometimes, hmm, emotional maturity is a lot about listening to our feelings and listening to what they have to say to us, uh, but not necessarily letting them make decisions and, and be in the driver's seat. It's not necessarily about suppressing emotions. However, there can be moments when emotional maturity requires us to postpone dealing with something until um, it's a healthier place and time. Sometimes that can feel like suppression, but it might not be. It might be just that you knew that that was not the time and place for you to process and really openly engage with those feelings and those emotions. So they might be coming back up. Um, with this morning do girl, this very emotional morning do girl, there might be something in your past where you dealt with it with a lot of um, emotional maturity that might have looked like suppression, but they might be coming back for you to deal with now. But there has been a lot of, um, it's emotional maturity isn't about suppression, but it is about making decisions based on the truth um, of our feelings and our emotions. So it's not ignoring them. It's not just forever not engaging, but I think we all have experienced times and places where um, where it's not safe to share these emotions, where it's not a good idea to share this. So even though we're having them, 
you know, sometimes um, it's a good idea to just promise yourself you'll deal with those later. Sometimes, you know, I'm at work and it's like, you know what, I'll, I will go home and I promise I will cry about that at home. But right now I cannot do that. So I will, um, but I'm not suppressing in forever. I'm just postponing the, you know, you just postpone it. Uh, but there is, it looks like there might've been some emotional, a lot of emotional maturity and mastery here uh, from your past. Um, then we have in your current situation, Knight of Materials, which I really like with this Ace of Materials, having already come up as an overall for the reading, this Knight of Materials here. So the Knight of Materials is this really typically slow moving energy, which we get with Home in the Sky. And we also get with the Observer here. Um, and there's like, there's a sense of wanting to know before you go somewhere, wanting to have the plan set out before you set out. So a lot of times when we see our Knight of Materials, he's up on a cliff, he's overlooking the land, he's understanding the path before him, he's understanding where he's going. This we see a lot of like the pattern, wanting to understand the patterns and um, wanting to see the lay of the land here. So that's what we're getting. And this, this, this joins well with this home in the sky and the observer as far as this sort of slower moving, stagnant energy. You could rush ahead, but there's a desire here to see more of the plan, to see more, to understand more, to, to have this observation and, and this watching and learning and really um, understanding something before you jump into it. Uh, so it can be a very slow moving energy, which is what I'm, what we've already uncovered here. Your hopes, your fears, your inner landscape, what you're thinking about. This actually came out in the reverse uh, six of materials. So this is a lack of flow and maybe a lack of reciprocity, a lack of generosity, experiencing um, that not, not, um, yeah, the generosity of being, is being stopped. You might be afraid that people aren't going to help you. You might, you might be afraid that, um, you're not going to be able to accomplish what you need or the people that, that you need here. Um, it could be a sense of feeling a need or feeling like, um, you know, in the upright, we sometimes talk about sort of there's this bean counting that can go on and, and, but the life wants to flow here and here and not drop here, drop here, drop here, drop here. And when it flows like that, everybody gets a little of what they need. So you might be afraid of not getting what you need. You might be afraid, um, that, you know, the generosity won't be flowing your way or doesn't flow both ways. There's always a sense of reciprocity here in six of materials and things being balanced. So you might be afraid of things being out of balance. Um, especially having to deal with resources or finances or money. Uh, you might be feeling maybe a little burdened or that something's unfair or that, um, you know, what you bring to a situation will not be reciprocated. So I see that in your hopes, your fears, your new landscape. What's at issue? The emperor, the emperor came out upright and it's supposed to come out ideally in the reverse in this position, but in the upright, we're talking about, um, Who's got the control? Who's got the power? Who's leading this situation? Questions about power and control going on here. As far as, um, you know, I see a conductor here, uh, conducting, delegating people. Um, so the sense of, of you might be needing to take control of a situation, um, or someone else is in control of the situation. We're not dealing with an asshole here because it's not in reverse. It would come out in reverse if we're dealing with someone who's kind of a control freak or something like that. There's just, um, issues and questions of the divine rights to move something forward. What do you have a right to? What do you have a right to do? Do you have a right to take leadership? Uh, where there is a leadership vacuum, which I kind of see with this reverse six of materials is, 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 uh, no, no guidance on how to, how to allocate resources. So it may, it might be falling on you that you need to allocate your resources of time and money. Uh, there's not a lot of guidance here. Um, and you're the one in charge. So, but there is sort of the emperor is about like who, who has the control, who has the resources and who's in charge of it. It might be that you end up being that person. I mean, we already see this king of emotions and now this emperor, there's a lot of leadership here, emotional leadership in your recent past. And now a sort of uh, resource leadership or something like that in the present. There may be a vacuum of leadership. Mostly the emperor for me just raises the question and the upright were just 
who is in charge here? Who does have a right to sort of guide the system and guide the situation? Um, where does that right come from? And is it agreed upon? There is a sense of, um, you know, the emperor's new clothes as far as like, for those that are in power, it, they are only there with the agreement of everyone else, right? Even like, um, I recently read the biography of Catherine the Great. Even she understood the limits of her power um, and not to push that because if you push that too far, the people start to understand, wait a minute, I, we don't like this, we don't want this. And so, um, so, so they can, then you lose your power, right? If you let the, so it's not necessarily that we're trying to trick people into saying that the emperor has clothes when in fact the emperor doesn't have clothes. It's just more about uh, every leader's power and, and control over a situation comes from the consent and the agreement of everyone else. You know, reality is sort of what we all agree to. So if we all agree that this person has power, then they can maintain that position. Um, so a lot of what an emperor does to maintain their, their power over a situation would be to... Um, to uh, um, not push people in a po into a position where they have to say you, you, you've put, you've pushed us too far, and now we can see that that the only power you've ever had is what you, we've given you. So, um, so that's that's just true in so many situations. Uh, whatever power someone has is the power that has been allotted to them by their underlings, by the less powerful. Um, it's an agreement of of what's going to be real here. Um, so there is an emperor here. There is someone who is con in control, or there are at least questions of who gets to be in control and who gets to have that power. Even if someone is in control and does have that power, that question is well is always there. Do they have a right to make these decisions? Uh, they they require always the consent of the governed in order to do that. Even in situations that don't seem like um, don't seem democratic, um, you know, Catherine the Great was ruling Russia. That was not a democratic system for the most part, um, and yet she understood still that um, her power comes from the consent of everyone. Everyone kind of has to agree to this game, right? So um, in your situation, aid of materials, lots of work. There is a lot of work to be done, a lot to be figured out. Uh, getting to work, you might be um, having a job. There might be a job situation. We might be talking about a job situation. Aid of materials is just a lot of focused work, focused effort, juggling things. Uh, could be a little bit of repetitious work. Uh, you've been here before. You've done this before. There is also a sense of expertise and a sense of being able to do this gracefully and a sense of being able to bring yourself into the situation and really run things and really... So some there's some sort of work situation going on here. Um, Aid of Materials is just about there being a lot of work to do. It's usually typically very engaging and has something to do with yourself and your own personality, being able to um, be manifested into the world. So that's going on in your environment. Your to-do list is five of voices. Huh. This is five of swords. This is a difficult place, difficult situation. You might not have a lot of good options here. This is also always a, um, you know, we see this olive branch being offered right here, but in truth, is it really an olive branch? Are we seeing the situation clearly? The Five of Voices talks to me typically about between being between a rock and a hard place. And this is the energy you're, you're being called to, to engage with and understand. Between a rock and a hard place. Could be about leadership and taking leadership and this imbalance, this fear you have of, um, of a lack of reciprocity or, a, or an imbalance in a situation. Um, so Five of Voices is, uh, I feel like, an acknowledgement usually from the tarot that there aren't a lot of good choices. Um, and in the end, you're going to have to just pick what's best for you. Um, not You're not going to be able to pick what's best for everybody in the situation. You're not going to be able to do this. Um, emperor, you know, you might not be, you, you might have to pick what's best for you in a situation um, without... Um, and not necessarily being able to lead everybody down that path with you. Uh, we also have um, this this um, king of 
the kings are very um on this muse of emotions they're very oriented towards everybody what what the whole kingdom needs there's a very a sense of taking responsibility for their lives and the people around them so in this five of voices though it's a difficult situation it's a tough tough place um and you're just gonna have to go within and make your best choice that you possibly can the one that's right for you that's one that's in most alignment with your life uh, because it's not going to work to take everybody into consideration here uh, there's not there's not great options there's not perfect choices here uh, there's not a right answer so you're going to be needing to go within and and picking the answer that works for you even though it may not be perfect for everybody involved part of what's at issue here the issue is maybe perhaps trying to be a good emperor and pick what works for everybody involved um, but this is saying uh, you're going to have to just do what's right for you uh, and that's going to that could be a very difficult choice to make uh, it does it does speak to decisions that need to be made and just really needing to, to um, pick what's right for you there is an olive branch possible here whether somebody sees it and accepts it a uh, peace offering or not but there is a sense of even if you can't offer peace to other people in the situation you can offer peace to yourself um, and finding that own that own route to inner peace in the middle of the darkness and the conflict because it's not there's not a clear answer here so you're going to have to go into your own darkness find what's best there uh, you can maybe offer a peace offering whether it's accepted or not isn't really you can't really control other people's behavior or other people's acceptance of the decisions that you make for yourself for your own life where you're headed for of inspiration in reverse um so you might not be leveling up this might not be it this might not be there there could be a breakup a break off of an engagement there could also be just um the four of inspiration would be the four of wands the 11 11 card in the upright that would be a trial period that's worked out well and then we're committing to the next level uh, but it's in the reverse so there might not be a leveling up here you might not be going to the next level in this particular situation or it just may not be ready for that yet but there's not the 11 11 card um, there might have been a probationary period and you're saying nope that is not what I want um, and uh, you may be saying no to an engagement or no to a new level going on here this this morning do girl and this five of voices these could be linked and combined sort of some grief from a decision that you have to make uh, to not continue on with something that's that that you've seen you've been observing it you've seen it you've seen that it's not going to it's not going to pan out and it's not what you want um all right aries well uh this reverse uh, four of inspiration, not particularly great, but also, you know, you're going to have to make the best decision for yourself. It may cause you some grief as well as other people. Um, but and of course, this can be on a scale of one to ten. It could be a more minor decision or a huge major life decision. So um, but there, there may be um, it's possible in the future. The vibe might be that um, I'm like hedging all these terms. I'm trying to soften this like. There might be a no here or a not yet time to level up or we're not committing to the next part of something it's just not going to work and it doesn't work out for you you went through the probationary period and um and maybe you know you've seen that this isn't going to work for you you watch you've seen enough and you don't want to move forward so all right aries i hope that that was helpful for you Thank you so much for your likes, subscribes, and comments, and see you in a couple weeks.